Imagine Golden Gate Park, 1967. January the 14th of 1967 in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, 20,000 people gathered in what they called the Gathering of the Tribes. Now, the Gathering of the Tribes started the generation of hippies, flower children, and is now still in the 2023s that we still have flower children and we still have hippies. Now, today, of course, we're in our 60s. Some of us may be later. But we all still gather, maybe not at Golden Gate Park, but we all still gather on social medias and um, cruises and things like that to celebrate that time of our lives because that time of our lives was the time where we were finding ourselves. We had a voice. We had what most teenagers and most young people didn't have back then. Our voice. Our opinion mattered. Was the year we were finding ourselves, we could have been artists, we could have been musicians, we could have been poetry or painters or just standing there dancing to the music. Now with the music, that's the big thing too. There was festivals and there was music and there was dancing like Joplin and Hendrix and um, the Turtles. And it was always music going on. And it was free love. The summer of free love was born. New ways of being. There was 95 million people across the country from California to New York was starting to join this movement. And it was all because of certain aspects. We were just getting over our president that we looked up and believed in. Kennedy had just been shot. We had just started the Vietnam War, which we all protest because Young men and women, not very many women, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately. Young men were sent out and drafted to be a part of the Vietnam War. And more and more were taken each day. It was all about finding what you were doing in life and what you wanted to be deep inside yourself. Like I said, you could have been an artist, you could have been a painter. If you couldn't sing, you could maybe play an instrument. Or if you couldn't play an instrument, you could dance to the music. And a lot of it was the summer of elusive drugs. Hallucination drugs. And I doubt if I said that right. Maybe I am on hallucination drugs. But I'm not. But... <laughs> What I wanted to say is a lot of it was experimental drugs. Drugs that would make you just float, you know, see things maybe. Um, it was all about free sex and drugs, hallucinating drugs and marijuana and becoming a spiritualist. That was a big spiritualism type setting too. It was all about peace. Peace from the war and protests against the war and they would have protests all around the country in the United States about this war in the Vietnam. And like on Forrest Gump, that's exactly what they did. They would go from here to there on bus tours and they would all gather on the bus and go. And they would go to like one site and then go to the next site and then the next site and the next site. And that's how they lived the summer of love. Was to protest about this war that they never wanted to be a part of. 
they didn't want to be shipped off to heaven forbid may get killed in a war that they really did not want to go in. Um, it was all about anti-protests on the government and how the government was issuing these, these young people to do what they want them to do, but yet they wouldn't put their own lives online. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people protested the hippies because they didn't want them in their city. You know, they thought that it was disturbing the peace. And as they, what harm does it do? Yes, I'm sure that 20,000 people can cause chaos just for the crowds alone. But what harm was it doing for all of these people to sit and listen to music and talk about peace and love? Peace and love, kindness, mysticism. Um, everyone had to have their tiger's eyes to protect themselves. Now, I still carry a tiger's eye to protect myself. Now, of course, you have to believe in it to be able to have it to protect yourself. But yet people had crystals. You light your incense. You turned your lava lamp on. You got your black light posters and your black light lights and, and all of this and you sit there and you took your hallucinating drugs and you just mellowed out to the music M music and of course there were people like the black panthers who fought against the war um a lot of other different organizations who had joined on to the the bandwagon of the hippie uh, that they fought against this Vietnam War that should have never happened. But getting back to the mysticism and being that it's all about finding themselves and what they believe in and what their faith is. And um, some did Buddhism, some had done um, just holistic rituals, um, a lot of herbal medicines that they found, you know, like, well, marijuana, of course, had helped with all of their psychologists, you know, the psychiatric aspects, made them mellow, it made them calm down, it made them um, get rid of their stress and their release and everything. And even if you could get a crystal like this rainbow crystal, <clears throat> you hold it. And you, your stress kind of goes, you know, it's kind of like those stress uh, popping thingies that you got now. Um, people believed in crystals and healing powers of the crystals. Um, they use meditation balls or bowls, excuse me, <clears throat> with meditation bowls, of course. It was the sound and they did yoga. And they just sit there and they meditated and they focused in on themselves. Now, when they focused in on themselves, they were trying to see what they wanted to be. What they wanted to be in life. Now, it's been a long time since 1967. And maybe each generation has taken little bits of pieces of the season of love. The summer of love, I should say. The summer of love. But I'd say it started out in January, so it'd be the whole year. But as the summer grew, you know, and went on, people started to go back to school and go back to their jobs or whatever that they had to do. And it kind of dwindled down. But like I said, there's still thousands upon thousands of us um, us. I'm trying to think. Maybe I did. Thousands of us who still gather and they still say we are hippies. I'll be forever a hippie. Even though I was born two years prior to this um, year. 1967. But as for groupies go, I love the music from J. Janis Joplin to Hendrix to The Doors to The Beatles. The Beatles were big because they did have the psychedelic 
music that you could sit there and listen to, Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, um, Joplin's, to, like I said, The Doors. And people would sit around in fields and they would listen to the music and gather. And that's why it's called the Gathering of the Tribes because thousands of people from all corners of the world would come and they would gather into one spot and they would see, they would put their necklaces on, their peace necklaces on. They would put their beads on. They would put their headgear on. They would paint their faces with sunflowers or have headdresses flowers, which that's why we are called the flower children. But... We also have children. And thank goodness, if you're a youngin, that you weren't born back in them days. Because if you were born back in them days, you could have been named Star, Moon, um, something as exotic as that, Mary Jane even. Something that had to do with the stars and the galaxy and everything. It was all about finding yourself. And I keep on saying that, but it was. I mean, people wanted to bring out the best in them. And why can't we take just a little bit of that and bring it out every day? Even though it's now, you know. We, in 2023, we hippies... Still try to do this. Still try to bring out the best in ourselves. In, like I said, groups, um, social media, uh, cruises. We still have hippie cruises. And gather and talk about not just the old days, but talk about what our lives could really be. And... If you find yourself, if you really look down deep inside yourself and find yourself and listen to the music you want to listen to and just mellow out and chill or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you call it now, but if you just sit and actually think, hey, yeah, I can sing this song. Hey, yeah, I can play this instrument. Yeah, I can p paint a picture. Or do some poetry. Read some poetry. Just find your artistic side. And um, with, with kids nowadays too. Kids can go to a carnival at school. Or some kind of social function. And they have face painting. Paintings of flowers. Or dolphins. Or animals. Or whatever you want on your face. You can get painted on your face. And that is brought from the summer of love. Now see, generations still carry on some of these traditions. Some of these things that were brought about in the summer of love. So how could summer of love be bad, right? I mean, it's all about love and peace and happiness. Kindness to people. People weren't mean and cruel. And, of course, like I said earlier, 20,000 to 95 million people that joined throughout the whole country, It's it did get chaotic. It did get cruel. There was us anti-protesters who protest against the war but then there was people who fought against that they didn't want to know what it was really like over at Vietnam and you've seen that in through movies like I said with Horace Gump you've seen it the government didn't want us to see all of that and he, the, they didn't want to see the widow crying because she had lost her husband or they didn't want to see the mother cry for that reason too for their child and the war was pretty wicked back then. And we still have that. So that's why we all try to celebrate things like Vietnam. I mean, Memorial Day. And remember our veterans who had fought in the war. 
a lot of us don't know about World War II. There's nobody left in World War One for sure. And there, World War Two, there is a very, if there's any, left living still to do that. But Vietnam War, Afghanistan War, and the wars after that, yeah. We need to do that in Armed Forces Day and uh, Memorial Day. We need to celebrate and... Think of those people who did that. And I think with the Summer of Love, that was just it. People wanted to share love. And it wasn't all about free sex, people having orgies here and there. It wasn't all about hallucinating drugs. It was actually finding your inner peace and your inner self and your artistic abilities or whatever to bring you out of your shell. It was all about you. Now get your tie-dyed shirts out. Get your peace necklace on. Get your beads out. Get your headdress out. Or maybe just paint a flower on your cheek. Or make a flower wreath and put it on your head. Get your crystals. Light your incense, your lava lamps, and sit and listen to some good music from that era. May you have kindness and light and shine your light upon those that are in the dark who need your light to help them. Peace.